If you want to grow on YouTube, you need to share it. Here are nine places I share my YouTube videos and you should too. Here we go. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Alan Spicer, your YouTube certified expert. Now, to grow my YouTube channel, I spread my spider web of content as far as I can because the bigger the net, the more flies you catch in it and the more yummy yumminess me as a spider eats. Weird analogy. Bear with me. You might have the best product in the world and if you put up a billboard in a field in the middle of nowhere, you might get the odd farmer that walks past it, but nobody will even know that the billboard exists, let alone your product. That's why you need to be your own distribution and you, for free, can share on these nine platforms. Number one, Twitter. Now this is a very easy to use platform. It disappears pretty quickly, but you can fire out as many tweets under as many hashtags, as many trending posts as possible. It also gives you the opportunity to deep dive into hashtags to see if people are asking questions. I monitor, for example, the hashtag start creating, hashtag YouTuber problems, and hashtag YouTube help. Why? Because I can jump in and help them if they have a question. Maybe I can send them one of my tutorials. Let's say you're a Destiny gamer or a World of Warcraft user and someone used the hashtag wow help or Destiny 2 help. And you can jump in and say, oh, that's how you get the Galahorn, or that's how you get the I don't know, never played WoW weapon. Twitter has its own demographic as well, so maybe your audience kind of fits that demographic. You're more likely to use Twitter, so why not promote your content on Twitter? Because they might connect with it. Two, Tumblr. You know that thing that everyone used to use before Instagram? That's the original grandfather of the scroll where you just keep going and keep going and keep going. Some of you may know Tumblr for more adult reasons, but since that's been removed and since it's been purchased and maybe even being relaunched, this might be a good opportunity to start posting on there to be part of the new wave or you might be posting on there and the platform might die. But that's the same with any platform. You can't avoid a platform just because it's not the popular one. There is still an audience base there and you might be part of the next new wave. You might be completely ignored, but still it could be a place that you might grab two or three more viewers to add to your community. Three. Facebook. Now, this is an obvious one. For me, Facebook is pretty much my social media platform, or it was until recently when I got addicted to TikTok and Instagram. Facebook has two very important places that you can share stuff to, which is groups and pages. I have a Facebook page. It's linked in the description down below. I also have a group, but what I also do is go out of my way to join niche groups that I don't run that are all about what I talk about. So in my case, it's all about YouTube creation and content creation and filmmakers and Instagram and anything that's video related. But if you teach knitting or if you teach gameplay or anything like that, or if you've got a specific type of niche, hunt out those groups. Let's say you want to teach people how to play Pokemon Go. You can go out and find the Pokemon Go groups and then teach the rookies in there with videos how to catch what the raspberries work as, how a pineapple is, how gym battles work etc etc. Facebook's made it easy by niching those groups for you so why not go and promote it in there. Don't spam, be helpful, answer questions, make friends but maybe you can help them with your videos, maybe your experience will lure them onto your channel. Four, Reddit. Possibly the one remaining monster forum left. If you haven't heard of Reddit then maybe you're not as geeky or maybe you're, you're young and you're flapping around with other platforms. Reddit is a self-regulating kind of forum area in which you can create subreddits for your own niche. So if you want to put your own videos on somewhere, say for example, YouTuber tips, there's a subreddit down below that I run, but you can hunt out your niche. So that's how you're doing self-help or depression or anxiety videos. So you go into Reddit, you type depression or anxiety or self-help or self-love, that kind of thing. You join those subreddits, you post relevant links or relevant comments, take part in that community, and you might be able to pull people in. Reddit is notoriously strict when it comes to self-promotion. So be careful. It's normally a rule of one self-promotional post to every 10 posts that you post. Just be part of the community and you won't have that issue. Five, LinkedIn. Now, 
LinkedIn's not all about business now. As long as you have a clear defined niche, you're likely to find an audience. Now I'm not saying you go on there and you upload your screamy gamer footage where you're trying to be PewDiePie from five years ago, but if you have a clear defined message and it depends on your niche, so I teach people how to create videos, that's an actionable skill. So that can transfer onto LinkedIn. It has one of the best organic reaches at the moment. You can start an account, you can upload stuff. You don't even have to have people following you and you'll start to get views. It can build up a portfolio for you. So let's say your content is all about how you you make photography. On there you are teaching people what an f-stop is, how to use the camera, what a microphone happens to be, how to use a tripod, how to set up your lighting, how to sort out your sets. Because you're teaching people all of these little tricks and tips, you build up a portfolio of your knowledge and that attracts people to you that might either want to work with you or in the long run businesses that admire you, your effort, your work and might want to sponsor you as part of some form of brand agreement. Six, Instagram. A great place, once again, to tap into a different demographic. Let's say you have a very specific age range. You know that age range, because you can have a look at your YouTube analytics. You go to Instagram, you tag your videos properly, you tag your Instagram posts properly, you can create backgrounds, behind the scenes content, or you can upload little teasers. 10, 15, 20 seconds of the, the tease that is this video, that might hook them over. They might click on the link on your bio and pull you into your channel. Instagram also comes with IGTV and Instagram stories. Instagram stories, if you have 10,000 followers or more, has the swipe up function. So you can create a story, create some buzz, and then hook them in, maybe behind the scenes, me recording some content. That's what I do. I talk to you on a regular basis, informally, you know, about my health issues or my cat or the podcast that I'm doing. And it builds a community, it builds intrigue in you. IGTV can be the same. You can either create original content for IGTV or you can repurpose some of your old stuff. I've got 350 odd videos on YouTube alone and over time I'm planning on drip feeding my relevant tutorials onto IGTV. Whether I use it as landscape or whether I crop it as portrait is completely up to me, but try and pander to what the platform expects from you. So in IGTV, they're much more portraity, even though that hurts my youtube soul, because for so many years I've been telling you, no, landscape over portrait. Seven, TikTok. Now this is new to me. I joined TikTok around about a week ago, and it's Basically, every quick element of Instagram that you can think of, the stories, the 15 minute clips, the 60 second clips, and humor. It is the second coming of Vine, in which the audience is much younger, but they seem much more engaged and understand how videos work. It also has a much larger organic reach. I've been posting for three days and I've already got over 150 followers and I'm already gaining thousands and thousands of views. I posted a video with no followers and immediately hit the trending page. So it just goes to show that organic reach on new platforms with different demographics can help you. I'm a little different to the demographic that's on the platform. So I'm kind of an oddity, a unique element. I'm teaching people on TikTok what it is about to be a professional video creator. Even if I do have a weird face and a massive mug that says big boss. Joining a platform like TikTok is a great way to pick up new experiences. Learn how that platform works. Maybe you can take some of that tips and bring it into your own content, but also because it's a new platform with a new audience, they may never have seen your face and it's a good way to push new people into your bloodstream of your beating heart of your already existing channel, in which if it's a new channel, there's a fresh new audience. If it's an old channel, there's an infusion of new eyes, fresh expectations. Eight, forums. Now these are kind of a relic of the old days. I'm not sure if the younger generations use forums anymore, but basically they're websites where you put a load of categories on a board and you pin a topic and people reply to them. Kind of like Reddit, kind of like Facebook, but the good old days, a message board. Forums, once again, can be a very good place to build communities. Most games have their own forum. Most games have their own website site and then that community that feeds around it talks about bugs, talks about secret missions. I know that I've been a member of the Bungie community for Destiny and Destiny 2 for a very long time. This could be your opportunity for any niche, whether it's knitting, whether it's how to raise children, cooking, anything. There will be forums out there that you can join to be part of that community and then help people engage with them. And then in your little kind of signature, you can put your videos, your links, even tap that community to start making video ideas. Because if that is your niche, that is the closest way you can get to your niche and answer exactly the questions that they want answered and make them care about you. Nine, 
blogs. Now I've got two websites that I update personally myself, but I also share my content out onto other blogging platforms. I create articles for LinkedIn. I share them on other social media platforms that have the ability to create articles or blogging areas. You can also pay people to distribute your blogs onto things like Huffington Post and other areas. To be honest, I've not really pushed that thing myself, but Bear with me. A blog is a great way for you to create content that search engines can eat, that are outside YouTube. It creates a distribution network that isn't solely dependent on YouTube. I've posted all of my videos to my blogs, 350, 400 blog articles, two or three times a week. I make the blog articles longer. I can pack in two or three videos, which are then relevant, that are patched with keywords and key phrases. So they may not be able to search and find my little video on YouTube, but if they search and they find it in the search results on Google and then go onto my website and then click on the video, YouTube then goes, ah, they found him from over here. That must be a much more important video than we thought, and it will bump up my video in the rankings in the long term. Blogs are also a way for you to express yourself. It's something that you can control. You can monetize, you can push people in locations, you can create mailing lists, you can add affiliate links. It's something that you have much more control over and isn't governed by a platform community guidelines. You can do whatever you want on your own blog. And remember at all times to advertise yourself but not be spammy. Watch this video and this playlist to get more views. Go out there, start creating.